Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is uh, Jay Pollard. I'm the online editor for Gaming Business. Um, very happy uh, this afternoon to welcome uh, Stuart McLean, who's product lead at streaming for SIS, who's going to be talking to us about the future of retail content delivery. Um, just a few words from myself on this. I think um, it's quite interesting to uh, it's very interesting to read um, and talk about to Stuart about this uh, because really it's the evolution of um, you know betting content in an offline environment to a certain extent. Um, as SIS and you know the industry in general looks to move many online components into a retail environment. Um, obviously, the online growth of um, of the sector has been you know is, is easy for everyone to, to you know has been noticeable over the last ten years. And it's uh, it, well, it seems to me anyway, it seems it's very much about providing elements of that growth to a retail environment uh, and bringing the customers um, into the equation much more, uh, giving them much more control over the type of content um, they can view and bet on, which obviously the, the, the end goal being that it's profitable for the industry. Um, so I think um, I think it'll be really interesting a presentation um, webinar this afternoon on all these topics uh, for also you know a part of the industry which as, you know, has found it difficult for the last 10 years or so. Um, so um, ho hopefully you, you'll find it as um, instructive and uh, productive as I have uh, about it recently. But anyway, uh, Stuart, um, I'll pass it over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, good, night, good afternoon, everybody. Um, for those of you that don't know me or haven't spoken to me before, I've been working with SIS for the last few years now on their streaming platform and their future streaming strategy. And um, one of our major focuses um, has been in looking at innovations in the region. I'd like to run through a few of those today and so show you how the uh, streaming and IPTV solutions can uh, potentially change the future of uh, retail content delivery. So I think if we start with the fact that the retail sector, as we're probably all aware, has been under pressure uh, across the board, um, and as many, as, you, as many of you are completely aware, in the last uh, five years, it's been approaching a 10% decline in turnover. A large part of this has been associated with uh, decline in horse racing betting, um, but football, of course, has obviously been uh, actually on the rise, so it's hidden quite a lot of the decline in some of the more traditional sports. So. In terms of uh, online, of course, we've seen a, a massive boom in the online marketplace. Uh, customers have obviously been taking advantage of the new in-play market and the ability to use their own devices while on the move with more new content and increased betting opportunities. Um, as such, the real challenge for the retail industry going forward is to embrace what it is that is so popular about the online space and uh, then figure out how can betting shops capture the same level of, level of enthusiasm within their land-based offering. So, in terms of content delivery, um, if we look at the retail scenario today, betting shops predominantly take video and data content via satellite and of course SIS has been at the heart of this for more than 25 years with a great deal of success and obviously a very good reputation in the retail space. It's been a very cost-effective and reliable model of delivery and um, extremely stable, including uh, particularly in poor weather, um, and obviously has a great um, level of reach across the UK and Europe as a whole, and also into other parts of the world. However, uh, in the markets of uh, online and in play, we're now seeing new potential ways of offering a better customer experience in the retail space. And this is more in line with, uh, with the online marketplace. Um, the modern customer now requires more in the way of data and on-demand content, whether that be social media feeds, live stats, more markets, um, and also some more niche sports um, and possibly more high-frequency betting opportunities than they would get traditionally in the, in the retail space. So, in order to do that, the opportunity um, we're given is with IPTV delivery. So, using internet-delivered IPTV to, uh, to local shops via set-top box devices, we can create an environment that is richer in content and can be delivered to individual betting shops. The method involves primarily delivering an IPTV solution using either unicast streaming delivered over the public internet um, or, um, in the case of some of the bigger operators, multicast streaming delivered over bookmakers' internal private networks. Now, this has been made possible by hardline fiber coverage, um, which is now in the region of 80% and growing in the UK alone, ensure, ensuring a strong national coverage uh, can be achieved for high capacity networks. Um, Ofcom are also reporting minimum broadband connectivity throughout the UK 
at over 6 megabits, with the majority of the UK at over 10 megabits. And as such, we are now seeing an opportunity to have multiple IP-based streaming channels delivered anywhere using standard broadband connectivity. The same can be said for the rest of Europe, um, and in most cases with greater levels of connectivity in some of the more emerging markets. Uh, Content can therefore be tailored on a per screen basis, per location, per region, and even centralized down to per screen um, uh, or operator. The, the opportunity for centralized control can be driven by a live operator or, in actual fact, um, automated using live data-driven triggers, which mostly are being delivered at the moment by SIS over its existing data service. So, what does this mean? IPTV provides a complete and versatile solution. Um, that brings unlimited amount of content um, uh, that can be delivered in a new potential in-play environment into the retail shops. It opens up a vast amount of data and pictures that can be passed over the internet, and it's easy and cost-effective to create extra channels for additional in-store screens. This enables more betting opportunities um, to be made available to, to more customers. It also offers the opportunity to better utilize existing screen real estate without the need for a complete hardware refresh. So even your traditional TV displays, which are previously reserved for the display of text only, um, could be utilized for additional video content when they are currently not being utilized due to quieter times in the traditional daily fixtures. Streaming also offers faster forms of delivery. So in certain um, cases, latency can be up to three to four seconds quicker than traditional satellite, depending on the source of the content and also the delivery location. So bookmakers at all levels, from major chains to independents, can tailor digital internet delivery to create options that suit them and enable them to target in-play and mobile customers that they've never been able to target before. So localization. It also offers the opportunity to uh, localize, which traditional satellite distribution had a limited offering in terms of the fact that there was little channel real estate and obviously limited satellite capacity. So localization would require separate channels for each variation of content in the satellite model. Um, and if that wanted to be made uh, available in different regions with different pieces of content, there would have to be multiple channels for each of the localized um, delivery pieces. So this wouldn't really make for a great customer experience as it would require a great deal of manual intervention on the part of the individual betting shops um, with them needing to potentially switch channels and move on to localized content um, on a per shop or per region basis. Now localization with IPTV um, means that you can actually have a, a truly unique experience all controlled from a centralized platform or middleware. This can be achieved by automated predefined set of data triggers and schedules. So the content can be tailored directly to a specific operator, specific region, or even shop, or in actual fact down to an individual screen if necessary. Data and branding can be added at the head end, which is basically on the device in store, and on a per screen basis. So this could allow for true localization on top of generic based content. So content can be driven by local customer preference based around local betting activity or even regional content. For instance, if a bookmaker happened to own the rights to a specific piece of content, let's say football, and um, it was very regionalized, let's say, for instance, into Glasgow, they could actually then show that particular match in the shop surrounding that particular ground. So you get true localization. And that wouldn't obviously affect the channels in all of the other shops around the country. So therefore, unlimited content can be provided on an ad hoc basis rather than with the generic channel approach that we see in the marketplace at the moment. And one of the other things that, we've, uh, uh, that we can open up in terms of uh, streaming delivery is the fact that the majority of the customers are now in possession of obviously personal um, data and Wi-Fi enabled handheld mobile and tablet devices, uh, smartphones. Um, this has obviously been demonstrated by the massive expansion in the mobile online marketplace that we're already seeing. So with the use of walled, gar uh, walled garden Wi-Fi within the retail space, um, we have the, op uh, the opportunity to further allow customers to access additional content. And this could be locked down to a retail-based uh, instance of a website and only offer retail betting opportunities as if they were online, but they would be tied to the individual retail outlet. 
So this truly opens up the uh, retail online experience with a second screen in play device at its core. So there would also be the ability to move popular content from multiple customer devices to a main screen within the retail outlet, further freeing up the customer's second screen for more in-play betting opportunities. Now, I'd like to elaborate on that a little bit. So as per the diagram, if, for instance, you were, had, were monitoring the fact that you had multiple users all looking at a, a niche piece of content, um, and once you reached a threshold of, say, three people within the store, you could automatically change one of the other screens in your retail outlet to show that content, therefore probably moving the, uh, the focus onto one of your major screens. And then that would then allow the users to then utilize their devices to in-play with that content, or in actual fact, go off and look at other content if that's what they wanted to do in a, in a truly second screen experience. So in terms of what we talked about today, what we now have is um, the retail being under pressure from online and in-play, IPTV now giving us the opportunity to deliver an online experience into the retail environment. And this would also include the ability to localize, as I said, per operator, per region, shop, or as I say, by individual screen. We can, un um, we can release unlimited amounts of content, some of it very niche that would only be, you know, wanted to be watched by, you know, smaller groups of users, which would not be financially viable with the satellite model. We can introduce customized branding, even at a very, very small operator level, um, obviously get, giving a, a true uh, unified customer experience with unified branding. We can offer 24-7 delivery outside of the normal hours. Um, we have centralized control so that we can actually um, use that in an automated or manual fashion. And we have the opportunity of wall garden Wi-Fi, allowing us to create a retail online experience within the betting shop. And this obviously opens up a lot more in-play opportunities, which everyone is obviously driving towards at the moment. So in actual fact, this is what I feel is the future of the retail content delivery model um, going forward. And SIS is in a position to support all of these types of technologies. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Stuart. Um, um, obviously, um, for, for the audience, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send them through and uh, I shall read them out. Um, but I mean, to, to keep the, the, the Q&A off, um, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll jump straight in there. I mean, the, the, the retail betting industry has been getting a lot of flack um, in the mainstream media for, uh, well, for fob tees, basically. Um, and, you know, I, I was at, I mean, sort of speaking, you know, of a recent experience, I was at uh, the World Regulatory Briefing not that long ago talking about responsible gambling. And I asked one of the industry, you know, isn't it, the, the, this reliance on fob tees, isn't it just a, a demonstration of the lack of innovation uh, from the retail betting industry? Um, and to a certain extent, what, what you know, the, the, the content that you're offering is a way to, to, to address this problem, um, to offer something new, uh, original, uh, but also puts the customer at the center of the, uh, of the service. I mean, is that how SIS sees it, or is it more, more straightforward sort of business transaction from your point of view kind of thing? I, I definitely see that's, that's where CIS wants to position itself in the market. We, we, we've been an innovator in the retail space for 28 years from the days when we introduced, obviously, the first audio into the betting shops. And there hasn't been a lot changed in the last 10 years. So CIS sees itself with its investment in its uh, extensive streaming platforms and also in new uh, delivery technologies uh, in, a, in a prime position to introduce this type of innovation that actually will bring an interest level back into the betting shop in terms of introducing new models for in-play, introducing the ability to access unlimited other sports, um, obviously that fit in with the retail um, betting opportunities. But yes, they, they, they've definitely seen themselves as an innovator, and it's you know well past due that this this environment needs to change. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, is that in your conversations with the bookmakers? I mean, it, does this issue ever come up, or, or for them, is it, is it more compartmentalised for them? The, the, the issue of innovation. Yeah, I mean, you know, to, to bring in something. Uh, absolutely. You know, just, yeah. I mean, there, there's obviously a, there's, a, there's a great deal of competition in the retail space, especially in the UK, in the high street, and um, all of the bookmakers are looking for anything that um, obviously makes them stand out against the competition. So in order to allow people to, um, to access additional sports like they would online at the moment, which is obviously something they can do from anywhere, but to actually only make that available in the retail space via, as I said, the, maybe the wall garden Wi-Fi scenario or the you know, additional content scenarios means that 
um, once again, you are meeting the, the needs of the, of the market, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and speaking of rollout, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, obviously you're in discussion with all the major UK bookmakers, uh, so, so you mentioned that there's some uh, confidentiality issues, but could you give us any examples of other markets where maybe you, you've rolled out some of the, or similar, similar products um, to some of the operators? Yeah. There? Absolutely. I mean, we, we have obviously had some traction in the UK marketplace and obviously for confidential, confidential reasons I can't be specific, but um, we've seen a lot of traction in uh, markets in Asia and particularly in places like Sri Lanka, in uh, the Philippines and um, some of the other markets across Europe where in actual fact some of these, um, they're sometimes slightly smaller operators than obviously some of the, uh, the UK operators, but they've managed to move very, very quickly and are up and running with these types of solutions already and are rapidly increasing their content uh, pool as a result of using IPTV. Right, okay, okay. And, and in terms of volumes, can you give us a, is there any indication of the type of how much the volume has increased or, or the effect it has on the betting activity? Um, I, can't, I can't give you an indication on that at the moment. I mean, obviously some of those numbers are outside of the confidentiality of, of SIS in terms of what betting activity sure. is going on. All I can say is a number of our customers are, once they've actually gone live with this type of solution, are uh, driving us uh, rapidly to increase their capacity in terms of adding more and more channels because they're doing um, lots of different contents and rights deals with third parties. Because obviously SIS, as, a, as an enabler of content into the betting industry for obviously for quite some time, we don't necessarily have to own the rights to the content that we provide over our platforms. The rights can be acquired by the bookmakers or can be third party rights um, that they that they have acquired and then we just enable that into their environment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And and in terms of um, uh, so, so essentially, I mean if 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 I've understood you right, you, you can literally provide more or less any any piece of sporting content that a customer might might require in a betting outlet, you can you can make that available to them. Absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned before, in, in terms of the, the most of the betting operators have a very standard operation in terms of the number of screens that they're using for it, whether it be for text or for video display, and it's a very traditional model. Um, and in most cases, neither of those uh, devices are, are tend to mix. The text stays where it is and the video stays where it is. But obviously, with this type of solution, any screen is available as a display monitor for text or video. And once we plug one of our devices into that, we can then, as I said, at quieter points during the day, we can show additional content or niche content, um, and we can mix that in with, you know, additional video uh, and text and markets. So um, it does, you know, it gives a great opportunity to show a great deal more content in, you know, in some of the quieter periods during the day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, um, so we've got one question that relates to internet infrastructures, which I guess is is a, is a pretty vital part component of, of yeah. the equation here. Um, I mean, one listener says, um, you know, internet infrastructures in some countries is underdeveloped or, or actually quite unreliable. How does IPTV secure the business continuity? Um, I mean, how do you ensure that? I mean, so it's a fair point, maybe in a country like Sri Lanka, for example, um, you, you know, how do you make sure you can get the, the, the connectivity is as high as it can be? Okay, well, Sri Lanka is an interesting point in, in case because the, the internet connectivity in Sri Lanka is remarkably good. And yeah, what we're finding is, uh, <laughs> yeah, what we're, but what is, is, easily what we're finding is with some of the more um, developing countries in, um, in around the world is their infrastructure is actually better than some of the infrastructure that we're, we're, you know, we're having to deal with in places like the UK because they're putting in right. brand new right. infrastructure. Now, if you were to turn around and say, I mean, I mentioned in the present the presentation regarding uh, the various types of delivery, SIS have a number of different models. So um, in terms of whether we are doing it over a company's internal private network that has uh, what we call a multicast VPN, um, sorry, I don't want to be too technical here, but that's an you know, extreme, extremely uh, powerful method of delivery. We, you know, we can provide very, very robust solutions in that environment. But equally, with the technologies we've invested in within the public internet domain, uh, we have our own uh, content delivery network capabilities. So we're we're well averse at delivering over public internet connectivity, and with the co the compression of video um, in the streaming environment, very very low bandwidth connections can support um, 
channels of the same quality that they're currently receiving over satellite and in actual fact can increase the quality even with a very, very low bandwidth connection. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and and well, speaking of bandwidth, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, this, this is where my uh, my comfort zone would know. But but one question asked: what, what bandwidth is required per shop for the delivery of this content? Okay. Well, if you were talking about a standard definition channel, which is what a lot of the stuff comes over the satellite uh, in the current marketplace, you're talking about anything from a one to two megabit connection, which is obviously the lowest that we'd see anywhere in the UK in particular and also around most of the rest of the world. So um, if you're talking about a HD channel, then you're probably yeah. talking about more like three and a half megabytes of capacity per channel. So you're not talking about huge numbers. Okay, okay, that, that can be used to, to, to enable the, the delivery. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and um, question about cost, actually, it's, quite, it's a fair point. Um, what, one question asked, innovation is stifled by the cost of distribution. Um, does SIS have any plans uh, to be more open to third-party innovators? Um, in what for pr pr providing innovative solutions over its platform? I guess, I guess so, yeah, maybe for distributing you know, okay, solutions. well, what I can tell you is um, SIS are not necessarily in the habit of building all the technology themselves. What we've done in our broadcast environment in the past, as, we, as the same as we've done with this, within the streaming environment, is we've gone out and buy the best of breed. So all of our technology is obviously um, licensed and uh, registered to work together, but where yep. we, we need a very low latency solution for um, content delivery, then we've obviously gone and bought the, low latency, the lowest latency encoding equipment. And where we want obviously quality delivery in terms of the head end devices, like you know set top boxes, we've also gone out and found the best partners in that environment as well. So we've kind of uh, created a recipe of partners to to obviously provide the best solution to our customers. Okay, so so, so that is whether it's tech to to actual content, I take it as well. Exactly, exactly. So we, we are in uh, negotiation with a number of content providers at the moment, so that they can actually make their content available over our platform, which is obviously gives the retail operators. Um, a uh, an ease uh, ease of access to to new content rather than the complicated integrations that potentially have happened in the past. Okay. Now um, one of the one of the one of the primary concerns, obviously, is always the data. Data comes first. But um, presumably, the um, most of these markets that are out there at the moment are already being traded by many of our customers, and in not many cases, they they have the data, but not necessarily the pictures. Okay, I see what you mean. Okay, um, and then well, from from the same same person, uh, from the same listener, um, if you are open to third party innovators, how should a startup get involved with SIS? Um, I would suggest that they pick up the telephone <laughs> and arrange a meeting. We are open to talk to absolutely anybody. It's why that we uh, we have a very active presence at most of the trade shows including ICE, where we're going to be obviously a big uh, demonstrator once again this year, and I'm hoping to show show off some of these uh, innovations um, uh, firsthand. Um, yeah, please. I, there's absolutely no reason why they can't come and contact us and show us what they're, what they're up to. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, okay. Um, just a, a question about latency. I mean, obviously, you mentioned you know you, the, the coding um, uh, technology to, to to enable low latency. But how reliable is it? I guess. I mean, there's a question. I mean, I'm a total layman in these terms. So I mean, how do you ensure you know reliability of uh, speed of delivery, basically? Okay. Well, as I said, we're we're using extremely um, well tested technology in terms of the latency piece. Now, if you're talking about some of the solutions that we've done, and I mentioned obviously solutions that are going out into places like Asia, um, we, uh, we're using best-in-breed contribution networks, which are, you know, the internet is the uh, biggest provider of online or video content now, so it's not, it's not as if this is brand new. Um, everybody is, is viewing the majority of their video online. Now, obviously, latency you mentioned is a, is a major issue. So what we will always do is we will take the content as close to the customer as possible in the lowest latency model. So if we have lots of customers in a specific region around the world, we will do what they call a point-to-point, -point, very, very low latency delivery, and then distribute lo local to the customer. Um, we wouldn't necessarily be trying to distribute everything from the UK around the world. That just wouldn't make sense. But as I've mentioned before, every location around the world is slightly different. We have a different model for the Caribbean as we, uh, than we do for somewhere like Sri Lanka or somewhere like we would in Spain. Um, but right. as I say, we've, we've done a lot of research into all of these different scenarios and we'll always choose the best solution depending on the customer location. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah. So it's quite tailored, in fact. Okay. Um, and um, another listener asked. Um, I mean, I, I'm assuming the, the answer is yes. But um, is is your content available on tablets and mobile? Or, or uh, I, mean, I think what they mean is specifically specifically for mobile and, tab for and tablets. Well, I mean, obviously the, the conversation today has been focused around retail, but SIS, of course, have the capability to uh, deliver to all major uh, platforms, and we have done for, um, for quite some time now. Our streaming platform, which is already being um, delivering content for a number of our customers, supports all of the major formats of obviously iOS, Android, um, and obviously standard Windows-based uh, devices, as well as some of the other emerging formats. Um, uh, things like MPEG Dash and things like that. But I don't want to go into too much detail, but yes, we support every platform. I even connected TV as well. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. And um, just returning to the uh, to the bandwidth, and, uh, the one listen asked, is, is two megabytes uh, the, uh, the minimum connection or minimum bandwidth required? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So what, what, when I said two megabytes, I would say that if you wanted to have the, the highest resolution possible or that would be required for a standard definition delivery to a large scale screen, that we re we'd recommend two megabytes. Um, but equally, if you were talking about a smaller screen or in actual fact you were delivering to a tablet or terminal device, the screen obviously resolution is far smaller. So we offer bandwidth anything down to let's say 64 kilobit audio, but we know that obviously defeats the object, but then upwards from there in various different bit rates depending on the requirement of the customer. So if it was a very, very low bandwidth connection, we could offer a very, very low bandwidth solution, which would still be acceptable in terms of um, the, uh, visual experience. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do, do you think, is, is it fair to comment, um, uh, you know, is it fair to comment on the, um, on the, um, you know the streaming element, uh, element in, within the betting industry because I mean online everyone's saying you know betting operators need to have streaming. Not all of them have it, have it, but I mean most no. of the major players do. Um, I mean obviously it seems to be even more relevant or, and even more indispensable for for the retail outlets, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I mean unfortunately in the online space. I know a lot of people have it and a lot of people don't have it. The problem that you're presented with in that environment, um, and once again without getting into too much detail, is the worlds of people like Apple and some of the formats that they've created for the online experience have meant that they've added a great deal of latency to obviously dictate the fact you get the best quality. Now to the betting industry that kind of defeats the object because all we care about is latency. Now, um, while you can't control the devices in the online space, you know, we can't control the fact that people are using, you know, iPhones or, you know, even the Android devices and they're using what the format they call adaptive. Um, in the retail space, we are very much in control of the device that is receiving the content and we can actually use all of the lowest latency formats to ensure that in the retail space, the content is very, very close to live. And then, as I say, in actual fact, in a lot of cases, it's faster than traditional satellite. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, it's a different, different set of circumstances, but, but um, obviously, it's, for, a, for it's, a, it's a different priority. I mean, if if you were to take the scenario of, if for instance there was an issue with uh, with connectivity and you were to lose a couple of frames of your picture, but yeah. in actual fact the latency didn't increase, would you really be that worried? I don't think so. Yes. Yeah. No. Quite. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I think I think that that, that was most of the questions um, I had. I mean, in terms of in terms of particular sports, I mean, you know, for, for retail outlets, I mean, it seems to be horse racing, football, um, greyhounds potentially. I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. for, from SIS's point of view, is it really just very broad based? You can supply more or less. It could be I don't know, dressage or something like that. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but do you see what I mean? Well, SIS the best place to provide any content. I mean, we have the largest teleport in Europe for downlinking content from other sources, and we also take contribution via you know by IP. So from our perspective. If the retailer has the screen real estate or has the time on their schedule, we can provide any single piece of sport that obviously we have access to, to them via the platform. So as I, as I mentioned before, it's not necessarily cis rights held content. It can be third party um, and it can be you know, very, very unique to the, uh, to the bookmaker. And it could be, as you quite rightly said, I don't know if anyone ever has bet on dressage, but you know, <laughs> never say never. But it yeah. could equally be, you know, of the moment, rugby, it could be football, it could be tennis, 
It could be localized content based around um, the fact that there may be a particular group of individuals that were in the country at any particular one time or in a particular region and yeah. wanted to watch their own sport from their own country. You could drive that sport into that bookmaker uh, for those customers. Okay, cool. Okay, um, okay. Well, and, and just, just to finish off, you. I mean, what's your, what's your, you know, your, your vision of, of the retail outlet, of the retail betting outlet in, in say, you know, two years' time? I mean, what would you? I mean, obviously, you'd like to see CSI's products everywhere, I'm sure. But you know, how do you mm -hmm. see the environment? Um, you know, how do you see the environment of, of, uh, of the retail betting outlet evolving in the next two years? I would like to see the environment being user, or should I say, customer driven. At the moment, it's very much all, you know, it's, it's a unified experience, and I, and I appreciate from a branding point of view and a, a past experience point of view, that was the way of old, that wherever you went, whenever you walked into a betting shop of the same, you would see the same content. People want to actually drive the content themselves. So I want to see people going in, and depending on what they happen to be betting on, I want the content to change along the lines of that content, so that becomes the major focus. I want them to be able to control what's going on in that environment, and very much create the kind of online experience that they're getting used to, but being in the comfort of a, a, of a, a retail outlet. Okay, okay, um, okay, brilliant. Okay. Well, one final question. Um, how many concurrent streams would be available at any one time in, in an outlet? Okay, well, there you go. If that will all come down to the particular bandwidth. Now, you could have a number of scenarios if, if uh, for instance, let's, let's use the UK once again, is if a, uh, a standard outlet had a business broadband connection and had a 50 megabyte connection of the, base, uh, uh, the basis of business broadband, or even greater, and each one of the uh, streams was a two megabit stream because it was coming in in, in standard definition, then you obviously you're in the realms of a 25 channel solution, um, but as I say, it scales. When you're dealing with handheld or bring your own device, uh, device uh, setup, then the streams are much smaller. So you could have lots of individual users streaming onto their mobiles at very, very low bandwidth and therefore get a lot more channel content. It'll all come down to how you manage that. And it, as I say, it is adaptive. So if you allowed, for instance, your customers to have 10 megabits of capacity, they would get the quality, the first one in would get the highest quality and as the numbers increase you could slowly decrease the quality of the pictures they're viewing but get more users online. Um, right. And you know, with, with regard to the shop, if the, if the shop's got its own fixed bandwidth then you know exactly how many channels you can squeeze into the shop at whatever quality level you decide. Sure, okay, okay. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, all right. Well, I think um, I, I think we've we've gone most most of um, most of the issues around this topic. Um, I think um, there's no more questions from the audience. So, um, well, sure. Look, many thanks for this really informative uh, webinar. It was really interesting, um, and thank you very much to the audience as well for, for your participation and the questions you sent in. Um, and a recording of this session will be available on the IEM Business uh, website very shortly. Um, and obviously, if you have any further questions, um, do feel free to contact Stuart uh, directly. The, um, at the details on, on the presentation. Uh, but in the meantime, Stuart, many thanks for your, for your contribution and thank you very much to the audience. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone.